Hello everyone! Today it's a very rainy day and I thought we could talk about how living in a van changed my perspective in the world and how it changed me. This year it marked three years since I got this house in the Italian mountains and um, before that I was nomad for about four years and I traveled mainly in the Kangoo in my little self-converted van. The first thing I realized is that life can be whatever the hell you want it to be. Um, you can create your own version of life and you don't have to follow the mainstream path that everybody tells you you should take. And we tend to fit ourselves in boxes and it's really hard to get out of those boxes. Before starting to travel in the van, I had a very typical life. I was working nine to five. I had my own place that I was renting. I had my own dog and you know, I would work during the week. Then in the weekends, I would distract myself by buying things that I didn't need. And in the meantime, I would try and save as much money as I could to go on holiday. And then I would go on holiday for a week and then I would be broke all over again. And so I would have to start the cycle. And I was stuck in that cycle for about six years before I realized that if I don't live and do the things that I want to do now, I might never do them. When you travel, you get to meet a lot of people that live in different ways and it's really cool to see how creative people can be and how many ways of making a living there are as well, um, whether it's remote working, uh, whether maybe somebody had a really high paid job in the city but it was really stressful and they decided to just buy a piece of land and grow potatoes or maybe it's just people that decided to have a few years break and volunteer so they can maybe learn skills that they can apply in their own homestead once they get to have one. Seeing people following different life paths allow me to think what it is that I really want from my life, what it is that would really make me happy, whether it's where to live, how to live, uh, what kind of job I want to do. Perhaps I would have reached the same conclusion whilst living a typical lifestyle, but I think it would have taken me a lot longer, a lot longer and I think that the longer you stay in it, the harder it is to get out. And sometimes you need to remove yourself from your own bubble, from your own comfort zone to be able to really see all the opportunities that the world has to offer. The second thing that living in a van taught me is that you really don't need a lot to be happy. And I know this sounds so obvious, but I think that I truly understood it at a deep root level whilst living in the van. As long as you have access to water, a bit of food, a bit of entertainment like a book and maybe a little bit of company especially in the form of a furry dog then you're fine at least i was fine in my old life i would buy a lot of nice clothes shoes um go to fancy restaurants or for nice trips and i realized that that didn't make me happy maybe there are people for whom that does bring true happiness but it wasn't me i was just distracting myself when i started traveling in the van i had a bit of savings um but i burned through those very quickly and so then my only way of making money was through jewelry um, and so sometimes i would go a week without making a sale and so i would have to st stay in the same spot until i would get a sale and then i would be able to put some fuel in the tank and get some food i have such fun memories of that time when I was so broke and by that I'm not saying that money isn't important and I'm not fetishizing poverty I'm not doing that what I'm saying is that I was much happier when I was just on my own in the middle of nowhere with not a lot of material possessions that when I was living in 95 being well paid and just spending all my money at like Primark and again being in that situation allowed me to really ask the deep questions without having the distractions of material stuff and mundane life Number three, it made me realize that safety is a relative concept. Let me explain that. The question that I would ask more often, most often when I was living in a van was, are you not afraid of being on your own, uh, especially as a woman? And yeah, I was scared, especially the first few nights and it gets better with time, but you would still, I would still get, you know, um, wake up at the smallest noise and I would still be very wary of who was around me and you know my escape routes and all of that it is very different sleeping in a van when you've been used all your life sleeping in a house that has walls and we've been told our own life that you shouldn't go out by yourself you should be careful people are dangerous you shouldn't be doing things on your own so of course you're gonna be scared when you are there but the more you do it 
the more you realize that maybe not everything you've been told was true. Living in a van told me there are many, many, many ways that you can die, but most of those are because of your stupid de decisions more than other people hurting you. And I'm realizing this even more now that I'm doing works in my house, whether I fall from the stairs or like nearly electrocute myself or like fall from the ladder, like I am the most dangerous person around me. And the stats on this are clear as well. I've talked about this in this video, but uh, the stats show that most of the violence that happens, it's inside, um, especially against women, it's inside their house from people that they know. I'm not saying that stranger violence doesn't happen, but it's a much smaller amount than in-house violence. And yes, you could say that this is because we spend most of our time in our own house with people that we know. If we spend most of the time outdoors with strangers, then maybe the stats would be different, but we can know because there isn't any data on that. By this, I'm not saying that there aren't strangers that have bad intentions, of course there are. I'm not saying they should be careless or uh, not take precautions, but it does help rel relativize the concept of safety, I think, especially when we know that the news of a person attacked uh, whilst they were alone by a stranger makes a lot more noise and sticks to you like a dog poop sticks to your shoe, um, whilst maybe the news of somebody attacked by their own partner, for example, in the house might not make as much noise. I might have a bit of a weird opinion, but I felt less unhinged when I was living in the van because if you felt uncomfortable you would just leave i can't do that with the car with the with the house if in the van i would move around every few days so it would be hard for, for somebody to study you from afar and like learn your routines not the same in in the house in fact i've been wanting to add um, security cameras to the property both for people and for animals um i don't often get people around here it's usually usually lost hikers or cyclists or maintenance workers but i hate being caught by surprise and i kid you not i was looking at ufi security cameras when they reached out to ask if i wanted to try them and you can guess what i said the security system that they sent me is the ufi s330 composed by two solar powered wireless security cameras and the home base 3 decentralized security hub it took me only 10 minutes to mount the cameras, one facing the driveway and one pointing to my front yard. The app makes it really simple to find the perfect camera spot by giving you real-time feedback on the Wi-Fi signal and camera position. And can I say, I loved how every single piece of their package was labeled for ease recycling. I know that this is not going to save the world, that it's a small detail, but my equal conscious brain was really pleased about it. The cameras have a super sharp 4K Ultra HD resolution and also have an infrared and color night vision. This allows you to capture the smallest feature on anyone entering your property, whether it's day or night. They also have a crazy good 8.4 zoom detail for when there's something far away that allows you to show off 8 million pixels of clarity. The cameras are charged through very efficient solar panels that use the innovative Solar Plus technology. They also have a 13,000 milliamps per hour battery, which will last 365 days. Two hours of direct sunlight each day is enough to keep them topped up, so you won't have to worry about taking them down and charging them. I've been using them for the past month now, and although it's still winter and it's been very rainy, they are still topped up at 100%, which I was really impressed about. As you probably already know, having solar-powered appliances allows you to lower your energy consumption and make use of a clean and free energy source. The cameras have a two-way communication system, which is useful to A, be creepy and scare people away, Oh, hello. I was waiting for you. <laughs> and B, tell your couriers bad jokes that they'll be happy to deliver to you again. What's the postman's favorite organ? Oh. The liver. Oh, oh. Good one. The home base 3 can store up to 16 terabytes by adding a hard drive to the opposite slot. One terabyte should last you about 15 years, so you'll be dead by the time the memory runs out. I remember when I first installed in 2024. <laughs> One of the coolest features of the system is that their bionic mind is able to memorize and recognize faces. You can save in your app the faces of your friends and family so you only get a notification when there is a stranger. The algorithm is self-learning and gets better with time, improving recognition accuracy to more than 99.9%. Thanks to the home base, you won't need to pay any storage fees. In fact, I only forgot to say that unlike other brands, there are no monthly fees. You only buy your physical product once and then you're set for life. 
I couldn't be happier with this system and I found the whole process um, from installing the cameras to using the app really simple and honestly quite fun. Now when I'm taking trips in the van, I'll be able to keep an eye on what's going on and also see if it's true that there's a wolf hanging around when I'm not here. Today, the 23rd of March is Earth Day, so you can join Yufi and switch off a few lights tonight and um, reduce your impact in the world. If you'd like to have local security at no monthly fee, you can check out Yufi solar product by clicking in the link in the description bar. Okay, back to what I learned from living in a van. Four, living in a van made me appreciate things that before I overlooked. So for example, cooking. I realized whilst living in the van that I really need a place where to cook. I missed so much, you know, the oven and baking. And now that I live in my own place, I cook a lot. Whilst before living in a van, I didn't really pay much attention to the kitchen, to the facilities that I have, to what I could do. Um, in the van, you can still cook fairly decent meals but you know you would want to prioritize meals that can be made with just one pot and that kind of lowers the choice that you have I understood how much I love taking courses and um, when you travel around the van it's really hard to be consistent and follow up a course and since I've been back living more stable, I just enjoy so much taking courses, whether it's dance courses or like pottery classes. It gives me so much joy. Before traveling in the van, I wasn't really taking advantage of the courses that were around me, whilst now I have a separate budget just for courses. Also on the same note, it allowed me to understand what it is that I really cherish. So for example, I thought that I wanted to live in a van so that I could travel places and see as many places as possible in different cultures. And that's great, but what I really understood is that I actually wanted my own property and that it's more important for me to have a garden than to travel. Because when I was traveling around, I did a bit of volunteering here and there for farms, local farms. And although I've learned so much there and you know, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to, uh, again, learn things. Uh, at a certain point, I realized that I was kind of getting tired of working for other people projects and I couldn't see the fruit of my labor. This is one of the reasons why I'm not traveling that much anymore. Although I would like to travel for maybe the winter months because in here it's just dead, there's nothing to do in winter. Um, but other than that, I am content spending most of my year here and work on my personal Garden of Eden. Five, living in a van taught me how to live in the present. I know, so cheesy, but it's so true. When you live in a van, you can't really have that much of a routine. You can plan things around, but there's always gonna be something happening. You have to readjust. You might find a beautiful spot and think that you're gonna be staying there for a few days and then you'll have to move in the middle of the night because somebody parked next to you and you don't really have a vibe. Uh, or you arrive to your hiking spot and you realize that your gas canister is finished and you have to drive all the way back to go and get another one. Or you get to the sea and you're thinking that you're gonna have like a lovely time just you know at the beach like sunbathing and then it rains for a week. It taught me to really accept and appreciate the days for what they are, whether it's a r rainy day, a sunny day, a shitty day, a great day, and to just try and let go of that control. And I think that really has helped me in the life that I have now. The sixth lesson I think is a huge one, which is to be resourceful and DIY-ish. So when I started converting my van, I got just a normal kangoo and I converted it myself. I had never used a power tool. I didn't know anything about electricity. I didn't know anything about mechanics. I didn't know what the car battery was. I had no idea. I learned through trial and error that I can do many things that I didn't think I could do and that sometimes it ends up being even fun. Now I can use most power tools and I am okay with attempting uh, most DIY projects. They might not turn out exactly how I wanted them, but I do learn something new every time. When you live in a van, you are often faced to minor issues that need to be fixing, uh, things that break, and you're not always able to ask for help, whether it's because you're in a remote place or because you live in your van, so it's not like you can live it summer for a week because where do you sleep otherwise? So. I found that I was researching what the problem was and that I could often fix it myself. And this is not true for every problem, but I think that often in our daily life, if it's, if it's 
if a problem arises from an area that we don't know anything about, we are like, oh, 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 somebody else is gonna deal with it. Whilst actually, maybe it's something really simple. And if you just put an hour of your brain power, power to understand what the issue is, you might be able to solve it and it's gonna cost you a lot less and you're gonna feel very proud of yourself. Overall, I think that this period of my life allowed me to grow confidence in my own abilities and it paved the way to what came next, which is working on this property on my own. I don't know if I would have tempted doing this if I didn't have this period of transition. So those were six ways that living in a van changed me for the better. And um, yeah, thanks again to Yuffie for sponsoring this video. If you would like to have local security and no monthly fee, I will leave their link in the description bar. And uh, let me know if you had a similar experience, if you lived in a van or if you traveled around, I'd be really interested in knowing. I shall see you very soon.